with the Mighty Minute. Lights, camera, action! Absolutely roasting! It is now time to see some of your amazing faces in our next section, Joke of the Week. Do you know the ocean is friendly? I don't know. It waves. <laughs> how do you take a tiger's temperature? I don't know, how do you take a tiger's temperature? Very carefully. <laughs> I haven't seen the movie The Tractor yet, but I have seen the trailer. <laughs> what kind of tree can you fit in your hand? I don't know. A palm tree. <laughs> Why did the rubber chicken cross the road? I don't know. Why did the rubber chicken cross the road? To stretch his leg. Knock knock. Who's there? Um, egg. Egg who? Bad yolk. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. <laughs> did the elephant do when he crossed the road? I don't know. What did the elephant do when he crossed the road? Step on the chicken. <laughs> What's the difference between a duck? I don't know. What's the difference between a duck? One leg's the same. <laughs> do you have a joke? If you do, film it landscape or sideways and send it to mightymongos at zomongos.org and maybe next time we'll see you on Joke of the Week. For gratitude attitude, let's see who sent in their videos this week. Thank you for the God for bread. Thank you for all the, the the kindness and all the friendships. And thank you for being your me and we're a good team. I'm thankful for my mummy. I'm grateful for the woods. I'm thankful for my sunflowers. I'm grateful for my brother. I'm a dad with things. I'm daddy and daddy. I'm thankful for going back to school today. So, what are you thankful for? Send in your videos to MightyMongos at setmongos.org. Film it landscape or sideways uh, and send it to us before Thursday lunchtime. And maybe next time we'll see you on Gratitude Attitude. It's time for WhatsApp. <laughs>
at your life when you've got not a lot. What? Be happy. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deaf in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deaf in the crowd, gonna send my Such a lot when you got not a lot. What? Be happy.
Hey Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. Engage heads up display. Check. Who's our hero of the faith going to be today? Searching heroes of faith database. Hero is Mary. Okay, get it loaded up. You're online and ready. Our hero of the faith this week is Mary. Now there's a few Marys in the Bible, so just to clarify, this isn't Mary as in Mary and Joseph. This is Mary of Bethany, a friend of Jesus. She had a sister called Martha and a brother called Lazarus. We're going to look at why she was a hero and what she can teach us. So let's look at the story first of all. Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha were sisters who lived when Jesus was on the earth. Jesus spent a lot of time walking from town to town, teaching people about God's love and how they should love each other. Jesus came to Bethany, the town where Mary and Martha lived. And it was with great excitement that Jesus was coming to their house. There's so much to do. We need to get the place ready. I'll sweep, you mop. And what should we cook? I might make a cake. I wonder what he'd like to eat. They were busy preparing, getting the final things ready when Jesus arrived. Now Martha kept on rushing around. Oh, I must go and welcome him. There's so much to do. Get back to the jobs and go and say hi and get everything ready. While Martha went back to the kitchen and rushed around, Mary sat down at Jesus' feet and listened to him. From the other room... Martha's getting quite annoyed. Hey, this isn't fair. I'm working my pants off here getting things ready. I'm doing everything. Mary's just sitting there and doing nothing. Right, that's it. I'm going to go and ask Jesus to get Mary to help me out. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But Jesus replied, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. These are quite strong words from Jesus. Could they be to us sometimes too? Worried and upset about many things. I think most of us feel like that sometimes, grown-ups and children. Jesus tells Martha that Mary has chosen what is better. But what is better? What has she chosen? Mary chose to sit with Jesus and listen to him. She realised it was more important to be with her guest instead of rushing around trying to do lots of things for him. I'm sure a lot of the grown-ups listening can recognise themselves in that. Maybe we're always rushing around and busy, probably doing a lot of things that are good and important. But when was the last time that we sat? So what I think these words of Jesus tell us is that working and serving or helping other people is a good thing to do. The Bible tells us to do these things. But what is even more important is to spend time with him. For us now, that means learning about his teachings by reading the Bible and spending time talking to him through praying. Maybe for you, it might look like sitting quietly for a minute at bedtime. Maybe it means drawing a picture Um, to help you think about God, writing something down or listening to some songs that remind you about who God is. Now in another story in the Bible, we see Mary pouring out a whole bottle of really expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. Does that also feel a bit weird? Why would she do that? So it was an act of worship. And many people would have seen that as a waste. It cost a lot of money, probably, probably many years of work, and it was gone in a few minutes, filling the house with the smell of the perfume. It shocked people and the disciples told her to stop, saying it was a waste. Do you know what it shows us though? Jesus told the disciples that Mary had done a beautiful thing, so much that he said that she would be remembered for it. It tells us a lot about worship. But what is worship anyway? Does it mean singing certain songs? Worship is much more than that. And essentially it's the expression of our love and devotion to God. It's recounting to God his attributes and thanking him for his wonderful deeds, for what he's done. And it's a moment of intimacy. And this can be quite hard to understand, so let's try and make it a bit more relatable. Right. So I was just thinking the way that you do the washing up is just incredible. I mean, you're so thorough with it. You get right in there with the brush and squeak, 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 squeak. (laughs) Make sure that the glasses, there's not any watermarks on them. You put them on the drainer and it's just like an angel has blown over them to dry them off. It's amazing. (laughs) Dave, thank you so much. And do you know what I was thinking this morning? When you cut the grass, the way that you cut the grass, you go around the edges, you get all those little weeds with the strimmer. Once you're done, it's like we've got AstroTurf. It's like we've got artificial grass down. It's absolutely perfect. You're such a good grass cutter. Thank you so much. For oh, that. do you know what I was thinking too? What? I was thinking, 
how you put the bins out is unbelievable. I mean, there's not a single trail of bin juice through the house. The way that you tie the little knot on, you do it in a double knot so it doesn't spill out everywhere. We've never had a bad year come and eat our rubbish. And it's all just because of you. You're so amazing at putting the bins out. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, that was a bit cheesy. But it was to make a point. We were praising each other, we were thanking each other. But also, like any relationship of love, it's about intimacy and about sharing how much we adore each other. We wouldn't say we were worshipping each other, and actually the Bible tells us that we must worship only God and no other. But like other relationships in our life, knowing and being known by God is a relationship that we were made to enjoy. And even more than this, we are actually changed for the better. We are transformed as we spend time with him. I think that's pretty cool. And I think Mary knew this secret, that being with Jesus and learning what it means to worship him changes us for good. So Mary understood what mattered to Jesus, to prioritise time with him. She knew that the most important thing was just to be with him, learning what it means to worship and love him, as well as learning how much she was loved. So Jesus, thank you for your endless love. Even when we seem to love other things more than you sometimes, help us to put you first. Amen. Here at Mighty Mongos, we love to get the Word of God right in our heart. And that's why we have the Memory Verse Challenge. Let's see who sent in their memory verse this week. Still I know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, 10. Be still and and no. Know that I am God. God. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. <laughs> We love seeing all your faces here on the Memory Verse Challenge. So do film your Memory Verse for this week, which is... Come close to God, and God will come close to you. James 4, verse 8. Our time together is almost through, but there is, of course, time for my favourite section, which is... Family Face-Off.
That's it, our time here at Mighty Mongo's has come to an end. So it's time to go to the loo, grab a drink, grab some snacks, and then join us back here again at 10.30 for the next part of St. Mongo's Church Online. We're gonna have uh, some worship, we're gonna have a relevant talk from the Bible, and we're gonna be able to pray together. It's gonna be amazing, and we can't wait to see you there. So join us, 10.30, for the next part of St. Mungo's Church Online.